What's going on and welcome back to the Cam Crunch Camera Crash Course. In today's video, we are going to be talking about exposure. This is a term that you might have heard of before and it's something that you will hear a lot more of as you're learning how to use your camera. We're also going to be talking about the three things that affect exposure, that is your aperture, your shutter speed, and your ISO, and how those three things can greatly affect how your images look. Exposure. This is going to be a term that all of you are going to hear a lot of, and right now you might not understand what that term means, but by the end of this video, it's going to be crystal clear, and the more you use it, the more you hear it, the more you'll sort of be comfortable with that word. So essentially what exposure is, is the amount of light that hits the image sensor to create an image. Now you're also going to hear the terms overexposed and underexposed. And what those really just mean is when you don't get the exposure correct. And, and exposure is going to be uh, subjective. How an image looks is always going to be subjective, but I'm sure you guys have seen images that look just too bright, where the highlights or the bright areas look too white you know, you can't really see any detail, or images that are too dark. So when it's too bright, that is an overexposed image, and when it's too dark, that is an underexposed image. And again, you're going to hear a lot more of that as you learn about photography, so I'm going to try to repeat the word exposure over and over again so that it sort of becomes part of your vocabulary. So again, to cap it off, exposure is the amount of light that hits the image sensor to create an image. Now, the amount of light that hits your sensor is controlled by three things. That is your aperture, your shutter speed, and your ISO. So right now, some of you guys might be asking, why are there three things that affect your exposure? Why not just have one thing, like a you know brighter or darker sort of setting? And that's because these three things, your aperture, your shutter speed, and your ISO, also have secondary functions that uh, control the way your images look. And I'm going to go through that in just a sec, starting off with the aperture. So your aperture is essentially the opening of your lens. It's how open or how closed your lens gets, and that also determines how much light comes in, of course. Now, the more open it is, of course, the more light comes in, the brighter your image will be. And, you know, of course, the smaller it is, the less light comes into your your camera. Now, the opening or the closing of your lens, the sort of numerical value of that uh, in, in terms of photography terminology is called f-stop. And you're going to see that on your lens. You're going to see things like f5.6, f4, f6.3, f8, uh, things like that. And it's sort of reverse. So the bigger your opening is, so the more light comes in, that actually means that it will have a smaller numerical value. And the reason why it's this way is because your f-stop is actually a mathematical formula, which honestly I don't know on the top of my head, and you guys will not need to know about that. All you guys need to know is the relationship where, you know, the smaller the number, the more open your aperture actually is. And the bigger the number, the more closed it is or the smaller it is, and that means less light is coming in. Now the secondary function of your aperture actually comes in the form of depth of field. And you're going to hear a lot about depth of field as you progress as well. And what depth of field means is it's the amount of image that is in focus or acceptable focus. You know, you've all seen those images where you have your subject in focus and the background is completely out of focus. When that happens, that usually means you have a shallow or thin depth of field or a small depth of field. So very little of your image is actually in focus. So beyond your point of focus, it becomes you know more out of focus. Whereas you have images where everything's like crystal clear, everything's in focus, that means you have a deep or a large depth of field. So more things are in focus. And when it comes to your f-stop, when it comes to your aperture, here is what the relationship is. The bigger your aperture size is, so more light comes in, right? That is a smaller f-stop number. And with that smaller f-stop number, with that bigger aperture comes a smaller depth of field, which means less of your image will be in focus beyond your point of focus. You know, opposite of that, the smaller your aperture size is, so the less light comes in, that actually means you have a larger depth of field. That means you have you know, more of your image in focus. So the second thing that will affect your exposure is called your shutter speed. And the shutter speed is how much time 
your shutter is actually open uh, for. So how much time your sensor is exposed to light. So when you talk about speed, of course the faster your shutter speed is, the less light will come in. And the slower it is, the more time you give light to come in. So when you have a slower shutter speed, more light comes in. When you have a faster shutter speed, uh, less light comes in. That's pretty simple, that's pretty straightforward. And the reason why you need to control shutter speed is also fairly straightforward in that when you have a faster shutter speed, that means you're able to freeze motion much better because you take that image and it's just like this. This is good for action photography or, or photography where things are just moving in general because you're able to freeze the motion. If you have your shutter long enough, it captures all of what it sees. So if you have a subject that's moving really fast but you have a exposure that takes place for a long time, if you have a person that's running, for example, that means you're going to get that motion blur of the person running through the frame. In addition to that, it also affects camera shake. So if you have a fast shutter speed, the image happens just like that. You take it uh, and it just happens. Now when you have a longer shutter speed, your camera also captures the movements that you make with your hands or your arms or your body. So if it's open for a long time and you're moving even just a bit, your image isn't going to be as sharp. So when you have slower shutter speeds, you typically use tripods or you place your camera down somewhere that, you know, where you can hold it still. Otherwise, you're going to get that camera shake, that camera blur recorded by the image. And shutter speeds range from the fractions of a second all the way to, you know, a few seconds. Some exposures even last minutes if you're doing long exposures of the night sky, things like that. You can uh, get up to pr you know pretty long minutes at a time. Fast shutter speeds for action would be you know typically in the hundreds of a second, if not the thousands of a second. And slow shutter speeds again is anything above that. You know if you shoot with like half a second shutter speed, that's already enough to cause the camera shake of you know your your body movements to be captured by the camera. So that's how sensitive the camera is. So you're going to want you know generally faster shutter speeds for most shooting unless you're using a tripod. Now the third thing that affects your exposure is your ISO. And your ISO has to do with the image sensor in your camera. And your ISO refers to the sensitivity of that sensor to light. So the more sensitive it is to light, the less light you need to get an exposure, whereas the less sensitive it is, you're going to need more light. So that's what the, the image sensor does, that's what the ISO does. But the trade-off is that the best performance of your image sensor is actually at lower ISOs. That's where you get the cleanest images. And what I mean by clean is you don't have sort of digital artifacts. You don't have what is called noise. And what noise is is that grain that you see in some images that you know you might be taking in low light. You'll see the colors aren't so clear. You get you know grain in your images. And that occurs when you raise your ISO too much. So that's the trade-off. When you raise your ISO, it's easier to expose your image because you need less light. So this is good when it gets a little bit darker, but again, you're going to have that you know less clean image. Whereas at lower ISOs, you don't, uh, you don't get any of that noise, but you do need a little bit more light. So typically, you, know, you keep your ISO at the lowest setting that you can, and you only increase it as you need to. So that is what ISO does. So what I'm going to do now is run through a few of the photos that I've shown you guys throughout this video and sort of explain how the three things, how aperture, shutter speed, and ISO come together to create an image. Starting off with this image of this lady on a boat. I actually took this in the floating market in Bangkok a few years ago and what you can see here is that I used a fairly shallow depth of field. I shot this with the 50mm f1.8 lens. So 1.8 is a pretty big aperture and that can give you a shallower depth of field. You can see that the background is blurred and even the foreground, if you can see right in front of her where the fruits are, even her hands are slightly uh, blurred out and that's because of the shallow depth of field. The reason why I wanted to use the shallow depth of field in this case is to isolate the subject, to isolate this woman. And that's because the floating market, as you can see, there's stuff going on everywhere. There's stuff in the background, there's people, there's stores, there's all sorts of things. And that is not necessarily a bad thing, but when you're on a boat and you're sort of stationary in place and the boat is moving, 
and you're looking for photos, it's hard to you know, really control your composition in terms of taking things out or putting things in because, you know, there's things coming in and out of the frame. And one way to sort of get past this or an easy way to get an easier composition is to use a shallower depth of field because that can blur out the background and sort of isolate your subject. So again, I use the 1.8 aperture. Now, I also wanted to use the lowest ISO possible because this is the daytime, so I set my ISO to ISO 100. And when I did that, to balance out the whole exposure to get the right looking image or correct looking exposure, I used a shutter speed of 1 over 400th of a second, which is, you know, fast enough to freeze the subject to get this image. Had this been a little bit darker later in the day, even nighttime, then definitely that ISO would have been bumped up from 100 to something a little bit higher to compensate for the lack of light. Now if we move on to this photo of my buddy Nate, I actually took this probably, I want to say almost six years ago, if not more, it could have been seven years ago. So this is a photo that I took in college on just a regular day. It's of my buddy Nate, he is a dancer. And you know, we just found a park and he started dancing and I started taking photos. With this photo, again, I wanted that shallow depth of field. So again, I shot this at f1.8. Now in terms of freezing the subject, this is where you can see the motion blur. And that's because I didn't have my shutter speed high enough to completely freeze Nate while he was dancing. The shutter speed on this photo is actually only 1 200th of a second, and this was also shot at ISO 100 because there was a good amount of light. Had I shot this a little, with a little bit of a faster shutter speed, I would have gotten his hands and legs completely frozen, and you know, I could have even gone slower with the shutter speed and captured a little bit more motion blur, but those are the settings that I took with this photo, and that's how I got these results. Now if we move on to this image at night with sort of, you know, the trails of lights from the cars passing by, I wanted to show this image because, you know, I don't really do too many long exposures, but I wanted to show the effect of holding your exposure for a long time. This was shot with ISO 100, so I wanted to keep it low. And the reason why I was able to keep it low during the daytime was because this is a long exposure. So I could put the camera on a tripod and let a lot of light in by leaving the, the shutter open for a long time. This was actually a 25 second exposure. So the camera was on a tripod, it held still, took that image, and 25 seconds later, it captured this. Now the corresponding aperture for this image was f8, and the reason why it was f8 was because I generally wanted a aperture that wasn't too wide open, so not something like f, you know, f4 or, or f2.8, and so I chose f8. Now a lot of people when they do this they actually do choose wide open apertures but again I wanted that deeper depth of field which is why I chose f8 and that all came together to make this image. Lastly I want to show you guys just a couple of photos that I took in my trip to Turkey which I went on a couple of, actually I, I went to Turkey last year and you'll see a few of those photos in this video and those were sort of just daytime photos, my usual settings when I travel. So since they were daytime, I shot them at ISO 100. There was a lot of light. And I usually keep my aperture at f8 because f8 gives you a deeper depth of field. It's easier to get a lot in focus. And something you'll notice with my photography is that I typically shoot with smaller apertures. So, you know, larger f-stop numbers. And that's to get more in focus. Again, f8 is the typical. And then the shutter speeds that go along with those, I just make sure that it's fast enough, but as long as it's not too slow, then it's all good. Depending on the particular lighting condition on that day, they're going to vary a little bit from photo to photo, but generally, you know, when there's a lot of light, uh, the shutter speed is going to be a little bit faster. So, you know, one sixteen hundredth of a second, one eight hundredth of a second, one two thousandth of a second, depending on the light that there is. So that's it for this video guys. That is what exposure is and what ISO, shutter speed and aperture are and how they affect the look of your images. Later on in this course,
I'm going to go through how you actually figure out the settings that you need to get the proper looking images that you want or how to get the settings you want for the images uh, for the look of the images that you want. So that's gonna be later on in a couple of videos, but till then I'll see you guys in the next one.